welcome to our annual St. Peter and Paul Christmas concert. It's so good to see everyone here tonight uh, instead of the spotlights and live streaming video equipment from last year. Um, my name is Tras Kolopalnik and I will be guiding you tonight for our concert. Although there isn't all that equipment from uh, last year, we do still have a live stream in progress for those that weren't able to make it tonight. And I would like to welcome all of you who are watching virtually as well. I hope that even though you are not here, you will still be able to feel the joy of this concert in your homes. As you all know, our concert last year was fully virtual for obvious reasons. And although the caroling sounded good, it just wasn't the same without everybody else here. So it's truly a blessing to be back. And uh, we ask our Lord to continue to keep us and our families safe and healthy this Christmas season. This year, our fair celebrated 120 years since its founding at the turn of the century. Although this was not a major jubilee, it was still an important milestone. When those first Ukrainian immigrants came to Auburn at the end of the 19th century, they didn't know what was waiting for them. They didn't know the language of this land or its customs. But they did know something very important. They knew they were Ukrainian, a people with a rich culture and heritage, and oftentimes difficult history, but people with a bright future. They started off very humbly with a small wooden church, but after quickly outgrowing it, they built this beautiful holy temple that we and our predecessors have faithfully used for over 110 years. But something even more important came out of all of these events. When these first Ukrainian immigrants established this parish and this community here in Auburn, they bestowed on their descendants a very important responsibility. We are their descendants. And the responsibility they gave us was to preserve and maintain what they worked so hard and sacrificed so much to build. But preservation is a very static term. Things that need preservation usually get put in museums or in a climate controlled storage locker. We need to do more than just preserve all of this. We need to cherish and cultivate it. We need to do so for the future generations, just like those who came before us did for us. This is our overall aim here tonight with this Christmas concert, and has been so every year. We firstly look to preserve the 2,000-year-old faith which has been handed down to us gener generationally since St. Volodymyr and all of, in, all of Kiev and Rus was baptized in 988 AD. We celebrate Christ's birth into our world, his coming to save us from sin and to grant us his kingdom. And because Ukrainian people have always been so strong in their faith, their culture is deeply rooted and intertwined with this faith. This can be seen in our Christmas carols and all other Christmas traditions that have been passed down for centuries as well. With that being said, we will begin our concert with two well-known Ukrainian Christmas carols. The first being Bog Predvichne, or God Eternal, and the second being Bifleami Nes Maria, in Bethlehem on this day. Our Ukrainian choir will give us a taste of the liturgical caroling to come on Christmas Day. Following them, some of our parish children will sing two Christmas songs with Father Vassil, accompanying them on the guitar. The first one will be everyone's favorite, Jingle Bells. And the second will be a Ukrainian lullaby, Spe Jesus Spe, meaning Sleep, Dear Jesus Sleep, which many of you may remember from our first concert in 2018. Please join me in welcoming the Ukrainian choir.
Okay, well, thank you everybody for having me here yet again for another year. Um, as Taras had said, this is definitely my favorite concert of the year, um, mostly because it's music that I get to choose and not somebody else or some other patron, but also because it's in my home parish and my community surrounded by my family um, and other people who I, who I grew up with, and that's more meaningful to me than any other performance venue that I, I could be playing in at any other time. So I'm really grateful to be here for that reason especially. Um, I, as you might have noticed, I just had to do a scene change with my instruments here. Um, the first piece that I performed, I was playing on my own, what we call a modern violin, which is strung with uh, metal strings, and I get to use a chin rest and a shoulder rest, um, and that allows me to do all sorts of crazy things that you might have just seen with all sorts of spiccato and, and different types of vibrato and such. Um, and that was a development that was only made at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, so, I'm now going to be playing a piece by a composer um, from the 17th and 18th century, um, uh, George Telemann. Um, and I'm actually going to be performing it on a Baroque violin, which is what this is here. Um, so it's designed and made specifically at the time period of this particular composer, um, in the uh, 18th century, actually, sorry, 18th century. Um, and this instrument does not belong to me, this is on loan from the Juilliard School. Um, I'm most grateful to be a part of the program there, and we study um, exclusively this style of music from the 17th and 18th century. Um, and the wonderful thing about a school such as Juilliard is that they can have instruments like this um, that are loaned to us. So I have the opportunity to perform and to practice on instruments from the time period, uh, which really is going to um, change the performance that you're about to hear drastically from the first piece that you just heard. Um, so wish me luck because it's a very different process. The instrument, um, I'm actually performing on sheep gut. So they take the intestines of a sheep, it's tough, it's not great, but, um, and they dry it and they stretch it and they wind it and they turn them into strings. And they're much more difficult to play on, um, but a much different sound as you will also hear. I also don't have a chin rest or a shoulder rest, so it's, it's designed mostly for me to hold solely with my left hand and by balancing it on my collarbone. Um, so this is a very old school practice you're about to see, uh, many hundred years old, um, but like many of our traditions in the music that we, that we know today, it's also from that same time period. So what I'm going to do is perform a piece, um, this is the third flute fantasia by Telemann. Of course, actually written for flute, not for violin. Um, I'm doing it as a, as a practice for myself because it's, it's much more different to take flute music and play it on violin, as you will hear. Um, and I've decided to make it Christmassy, so I've inserted uh, God Rest You Mary Jesse into the middle of it. That will be on my, my own um, variation. Again, wish me luck with that. Um, <laughs> Again, thank you all for allowing me to be here. I feel a little bit bad on this particular concert because I usually have so much time to prepare for this wonderful concert, my favorite concert of the year. Uh, but unfortunately this year, there was just so much going on and traveling and performing that it, it kind of got to be the last couple of days here putting things together. But graciously with the Kolopelnik family, we were able to do it. And here we are in person, which is a huge deal performing and playing them uh, together. All right, so here's the Tumman Food Plantation number three.
first he will combine two well-known songs to St. Nicholas, the first being the Ukrainian Ok Dok Da, which is uh, our traditional uh, liturgical hymn to St. Nicholas, and the second being Jolly Old St. Nicholas. He wanted to combine these two different cultural experiences he grew up with into one song, and I'm sure that St. Nicholas will be smiling down as he hears them play. The second carol he will play is We Three Kings. I'm very glad personally that he's playing this carol for a special reason. Um, as many of you may know, one of our beloved parishioners that passed away this year, Mr. Alan Miskell, was a member of our choir for many years. Uh, the choir used to go to the local nursing homes where some of our parishioners were residents and we would sing Christmas carols to them. And I remember him telling me a few years ago that one of his favorite carols was We Three Kings and that we should sing it with the choir someday. Unfortunately, we never got to sing it, but I know that he'll be very happy looking down as well and watching you play with you. Um, after this, I will be singing the Christmas carol, What Child Is This, with Jimmy accompanying me on the violin. Um, but this is really quite an impressive instrument that I'm holding in front of me. 
Um, it takes place originally, um, its purpose was kind of like the pipe organ. Um, in, in the 16th, 17th, 18th century, the pipe organ was the loudest thing uh, that was that a human being could possibly make. So, uh, you know, you go into these big churches way back in, in old school Europe, these big, huge, beautiful pipe organs made these incredibly loud noises, and that to people was tremendous. So this actually is a small version of what the pipe organ was, uh, meaning that it has an entire system of reeds, we call it, inside. Um, it has bellows, which I'm pulling back and forth, that pushes the air through the reeds, which are two pieces of thin wood that has a pitch. Each reed has a sound. Um, for example, is one pitch, and then if I push another stop, it adds another reed to it that's also the same pitch. For example, you can hear how the sound builds. Similar to what an organist does as they're playing and pulling out different stops, that's technically where the term comes from. When you pull out all the stops, you're literally making as much sound as possible. That's the exact same situation that I'm doing here. Um, that also being said, I have this really complicated um, system of buttons on this side, which is just my bass chords. That's all it is. And it's all based in the system of what we call the circle of fifths. Which means all the chords that I could ever need are right there. That's it. Any pop tune you ever heard, I just played it. There it is. <laughs> Three chords only, and you can go in between major or minor, augmented, and so on and so forth. It just keeps going and going and going. That's an awful lot of reeds to have in one instrument. Uh, and it certainly is heavy to carry all of those reeds, I must say, which is why I'm sitting for this one. Um, but the accordion made uh, its debut hundreds of years ago um, and has taken its way from all sorts of areas such as South America to, of course, Eastern Europe. Um, we are very familiar with it in Ukrainian culture, uh, known as the Bayan, correct? There's all sorts of different kinds that we can use. Celtic culture uses them, all over the place. So I'm going to play uh, We Three Kings next on the accordion with a little bit of a, a waltz dance version.
As we near the end, some of you may have noticed that one very famous carol hasn't been played yet. We couldn't call ourselves Ukrainian if we didn't include Shtadrik, better known as Ukrainian Bell Carol or Carol of the Bells. Now, I don't want to be a repetitive professor explaining to everyone every year the history of the carol, so I'll keep it short this time. Mikhail Leontovich composed this famous carol in 1916. It's what you call a Shtadrivka, or a New Year's Carol. This New Year's carols were sung as wishes to a person or a household for the New Year to be full of blessings. In this specific song, the words tell of a swallow flying into a household, singing these wishes to all its members. Interestingly, the lyrics sing of a spring setting as various animals are born and the winter ends. This is because the Shtadrivka predate Christianity in Ukraine, and the New Year usually was celebrated in the spring. With the baptism of Kiev in Rus in 988, this New Year celebration was moved to coincide with the liturgical and civil calendar to January 1st. The song first premiered in Carnegie Hall in New York in 1921, and we all know the rest is history, of course. So this is only one of the many things that Ukraine has shared with the world, and we as Ukrainian Americans should be very proud. After this, we will have a final carol for you this evening. It has become somewhat of a tradition for my family and I to close off with the Ukrainian Christmas carol, and we will continue that this year. We will be singing a Ukrainian Christmas lullaby titled Family Nichu in the Dark Night, with Jimmy accompanying on the violin. It sings of that night in Bethlehem when our Savior was born, and of his mother Mary cradling him, and her singing of his future, of him bringing the light of faith to the world, but also suffering and dying on the cross at the hands of those who did not accept his love. We hope you enjoy, and here is Jimmy with Shadr, the Ukrainian doll carol.
everyone a merry and blessed Christmas and a happy and healthy new year.